punya, or the meritorious deeds which purify and elevate one's existence. Among the three forms of punya, Seyaruji spoke about generosity or dana in a general way. And yesterday he began to speak about sila, how by avoiding what is not good to do or say, one's behavior becomes tame. It becomes delightful and gentle and peaceful. This is the purifying act of sila or sila punya. So we arrived at that yes at this topic yesterday. To avoid that those deeds and speech which should be avoided is something that everyone in the world should know how to do. If one is human, then it is fundamental to become truly human. And generosity will not do this for us because generosity is not part of moral conduct. It's the good deed of sila, sila ponya, which makes a person human. So if we think about it, killing, stealing, various forms of sexual misdeeds, lying, abuse of drugs and intoxicants, these types of acts, if one has to suffer them, one won't want to accept this. These actions destroy one's welfare and one's prosperity. And just as one doesn't want uh, to endure these acts, neither do others. So if one controls one's behavior and thus refrains from harming others, then this act is punya. It, it purifies one's acts and speech. And this is quite uh, worthy of respect making one's action pure in this way. This, the behavior that results is to be cherished. So one keeps one's sila out of, because one values this clean behavior and one keeps and one becomes truly human. So because this is a very important topic, Seraji began to speak about this yesterday. To avoid the violent acts of body and speech, to avoid actions and speech which are to be avoided is very good work. And the immediate benefit that one gains from doing this is clean, pure, blameless behavior. Clean actions and speech are what should be done, and thus they're called kiriya. Kiriya means in Pali, something which has to be done. It must be done. It's not something that can be neglected or put aside. It must be done just the way we need to eat food every day. It is a human being's responsibility to avoid misdeeds. And if one does it, if one avoids these gross acts of body and speech, then what results is that when one reflects upon one's life, one sees that one's actions and speech have become clean. They've become peaceful and gentle. And when one sees this, one feels happy. This is not like the happiness that we get when we enjoy sense pleasures. This is a special kind of happiness, sukha visesa. But this is just the base. This is just the beginning. One who wants special happiness 
What is it that they need to do to gain this? First of all, they need to keep sila because with sila, morality, then coarse behavior becomes clean and gentle. And this is the immediate benefit. Furthermore, others are not violated by our actions or our speech. And therefore, one's individual world becomes peaceful. One's environment also becomes peaceful to this extent. If everyone on the planet would keep the five precepts, there would be true peace. There's no sense in calling for peace without taking the step of making one's own individual world peaceful by keeping the five precepts. So sila is extremely important. This sila is better if it's established in advance. One knows in advance that killing, stealing are things not to be done. And one has the intention or the chetana to avoid them. This is what we should establish in the beginning. And having established it, the intention to avoid killing, stealing, adultery, and so on. Then one preserves it, one, one keeps that intention the way it was initially established so that it becomes very firm. And when, it, when, the, when our sila is quite firm, well established, then there won't be any violations. One won't uh, violate any of these, um, won't, one won't commit any violent acts. So this is because one is taking care to restrain oneself. When one commits acts that violate others, then others are harmed. So what is needed for our self-restraint to be strong and good? What is needed are the qualities of moral shame and moral fear. Shame and fear regarding doing misdeeds. And further, one also needs the ability to put oneself in another's place and understand how they feel. And when one has these qualities, then one, there, one won't commit any acts of killing. One won't steal. One won't go to the extent of committing adultery, lying, or abusing drugs and intoxicants. So the qualities of moral shame and moral fear are very important. Hiri and otapa are the qualities of being disgusted by bad deeds, the way one would be disgusted by feces and one wouldn't want to pick it up. It's also the quality of fearing, shrinking from performing bad deeds, the way one shrinks from picking up a red-hot iron burning ball. One shrinks from picking that up because one knows it will burn. Every human being should have these two qualities of shame and fear regarding misdeeds. If one doesn't have these qualities, then one will turn to immoral actions and one will violate other people. Thus, one's own individual world starts to burn. It burns with the qualities of ahiri and anotapa, the qualities which aren't ashamed to do, to do something wrong, not afraid to, doing, to do something wrong. And these qualities are now overwhelming the world. Therefore, the internal fires of greed, of hatred, and delusion are burning wildly in the world. And 
this heat, the heat that is produced by the internal fires, the Buddha called greed, hatred, and delusion, loba, dosa, and moha, internal fires, the heat that is produced by this, these is greater than the heat of the atom bomb or the hydrogen bomb. Not seeing the defects of misdeeds and thinking that they're good is avijja or ignorance. And when one doesn't see the faults of misdeeds, then one accepts them. And wanting what doesn't have, what one doesn't have, one works to get it. And getting what one wants, one feels elated and then pride follows. If one gets what one doesn't like, then there's dislike, followed by anger, hatred, cruelty. And if one looks to see the cause for these extreme, uh, extreme greed, extreme hatred, and ignorance in the world, one sees that it's because of a lack of shame and fear regarding misdeeds. So therefore, in the Buddhist text, this lack of shame, ahiri, and lack of moral fear, anottapa, it's said that they soak up the heat of greed, hatred, and delusion. And one, when one doesn't have these qualities of shame and dread, then one becomes very, very hot. So the people of the world have no fear and shame regard mostly have no fear and shame regarding misdeeds and so in turn people are overcome with greed or overcome with anger and every whenever there's greed or anger occurring there's delusion moha occurring even when there isn't uh, greed and anger, there can still be delusion. And only when people are sleeping is there any relief from these unwholesome qualities that are burning in the mind. Delusion is always present. But most people don't know that they are burning with these internal fires. These dhammas, which are devoid of moral shame, devoid of moral fear, or ahiri and anotapa, are called tanha, dhammas. They are dhammas that are like the color black. If you go into the hot sun wearing black, the black colored clothing will soak up the heat of the sun. So if one has to go into the hot sun, one should wear white. And if you look at the Arabs, Arabs when they go into the desert, they wear white. And so looking at this, one can see that this is how to behave. So the people of the world, because of lacking moral shame and moral fear, are as if they are wearing black in the hot sun. Because without shame and fear, then ordinary greed turns into, one follows it, one gives into it, and one's greed becomes extreme. One becomes extremely selfish. And when one is extremely selfish, then one doesn't think at all. One has no ability to uh, care for another person's welfare. Therefore, one can't have a mind of loving kindness. And with that, there comes hatred. Hatred brings cruelty. So dosa, or anger, also soaks up a lot of the heat. And ignorance, or moha, is involved. Because people think that greed and anger, loba and dosa, are good. And they accept these feelings in themselves. So every time that greed or anger, loba or dosa occur, moha, delusion, is also present. 
So this is how heat is soaked up by unwholesome qualities. And most of the people in the world are soaking up heat like this. The qualities of not being ashamed or not being afraid to do wrong are qualities that destroy one's individual world. And they also make one's, the world around one unstable and unpeaceful. This is what is meant by the destruction of the world. When people can't control their greed or can't control their anger, they commit misdeeds which bring about the destruction of their own individual world. And thus the environment also is harmed, those around us. So if we have uh, just one person like that, is, uh, it, it, the situation will be hot. If you can imagine a group of 10 people who are like this, it's worse. A group of 100 people that it's like this, it's even worse. So most people in the world have destroyed their own individual world by immorality. If one has hiri and utapa, moral shame and moral fear, so that one is disgusted by misdeeds and shrinks from doing them, then one controls oneself so that one doesn't commit these actions. And thus the one's behavior being pure and clean. Uh, these qualities of hiri and otapa are like the color white, clothing that is white, because they reflect heat, they repel heat. And this is how the Buddha described hiri and otapa. With the protection of white color, white colored clothing, with the protection of hiri and otapa, one's physical and verbal behavior become clean and one is truly human because of one's behavior. Due to hiri and otapa, moral shame and moral dread, one doesn't commit violent acts and thus one preserves one's own little world. Therefore, Hiri and Otapa are called the guardians of the world, Lokapala, because they protect one's individual world. They keep one from committing misdeeds, and thus the world at large is also protected. If there is one person here keeping the five precepts, one person there, one group, another group. If there are many groups like this in the world of people keeping the five precepts, then we could cover the world with this white protective covering and the world would be very peaceful. When one's basic morality is complete, then one becomes free of blame from those around one. This is called anavaja. One is, one's behavior becomes faultless. And becoming free of blame and criticism, then one's dignity or one's qualities become improved. Being free of criticism being free of uh, coarse behavior, one is, one's behavior becomes refined and tamed. So when one avoids actions, killing, stealing, adultery, lying, abuse of drugs and intoxicants, these acts are gross acts of body and speech. And when one avoids them, one's one no longer receives blame associated with these. Therefore, being free of blame, one also becomes praiseworthy. And from there, one's, one's life becomes peaceful, and in turn, one's environment also 
the world around one becomes peaceful. And this is delightful further. So one by one, our virtues shine. Our qualities as a human uh, become bright. And therefore, Hiri and Otapa are also called Deva Dhammas. They're, the, they're Dhammas which make our, our lives shine more bright. The qualities of Hiri and Otapa, moral shame and moral dread, moral fear, make the people of the world truly human. And if we don't have these qualities, then one is not truly human and one turns to acts that make our own world um, unpeaceful. So, on the other hand, when we have this, when we have these qualities, we keep our morality and we preserve our own individual world. We also preserve the world around us. So if only half the people in the world, don't even think about if the whole world kept five precepts, if only half the world kept five precepts, how peaceful it would be. So one should know the faults involved in doing misdeeds and the advantage of avoiding them. And one should come to cherish um, morality. Morality. One should come to cherish the avoiding of, of misdeeds and cherish uh, not getting the bad results that come, getting the good results that come from keeping good sila. And this is a very brief explanation of Hiri and Otapa. For this reason, uh, in the Buddha's time, a person named Devadatta came to the Buddha and asked him, what is it that is good up until old age? Ya kensu ya, ya wa zara sadhu. And the Buddha replied that it is sila, which is good all our lifetimes, until the very moment of death even. So it is not just good in an ordinary way. It is truly desirable. So it is something that is good for us from the very moment we're born until the very moment we die. And sila, keeping basic morality, is among the most important things that one can do. And this can be shown because it has four qualities. There are four qualities that mark, or characteristics that mark, something that is very important to do. And the first characteristic is that, it, that avoiding physical and verbal misdeeds is something that has to be done. One can't not do this. And the second characteristic is that this keeping of sila has to be done by ourselves. We can't have someone else do it for us. We can't do it by proxy. Third is that it has to be done in time, regularly. That means we have to do it all the time. And it has to be done on time, which means we have to keep ourselves keep ourself from committing misdeeds when the opportunity arises. So sila is something that has to be done in time and on time. And the fourth characteristic of something that's very important to do is that it brings a lot of benefit. And if you think about the results of keeping sila, the benefits that it brings to oneself, the benefits that it brings to the world around us, one can see that keeping basic sila is a very important thing to do because it has these four 
it meets these four qualifications. So every person in the world should have the ability to reflect and should look at the environment around them. So when uh, people who have looked at the world and have studied the world and society and reflected on it have found that um, in the past there was a strong emphasis on intelligence quotient on IQ and personal qualities which Sayadaw described as SQ uh, were not included in what people emphasized in teaching their young people and because of that the condition of young people these days is that many cannot control themselves their behavior is completely out of control and in examining why this has come to be it's seen as coming having come to be because of too much emphasis on worldly education on IQ and th things like basic morality and good personal conduct which I'm going, uh, can be called EQ Sayadaw calls SQ and in this case uh, it can stand for sila quotient uh, these things are needed these things are, are very much needed so in a study that was done of why people succeed a thousand successful people were studied and it was it was found that in 25 percent of the people studied the crucial factor was their IQ but in the majority in 75 percent the crucial factor was not their IQ the crucial factor involved personal qualities that can be called EQ or in Sayadoji's case called SQ and if you think about it IQ is not something that is good for one's entire life because when we get old we may lose our faculties so but when one has uh, is strongly established in sila if one has this good sila quotient then this is very good for one's life one's entire life and with sila as the basis one can also um, with this if one can also develop the practice so that one can keep one's mind truly human so that one can have a human mentality and further so that one can develop special human knowledge then one's own individual world will be very peaceful and Sirauji hopes that the people who have come here to practice will be able to do so with respect and care cherishing the practice and may they be able to practice until they reach a satisfactory stage so Sayadaw urges all of you uh, to do this <laughs>